So in today's video, we're going to be looking at the Zyber 8. So I'm going to be giving you my honest thoughts of us mining with it for quite a while. We did this with the, I think, the Bitax Gamma a couple of weeks ago. But we're going to be giving a kind of honest review of this Zyber 8 that we've had, I think, for about four months now. And it's got actually a bunch of things that we would like to run through. So we're thinking about upgrading this fan that you have in here to a Nocta one. And we're also thinking about upgrading the heatsink, which I'll kind of show you or we'll touch on a little bit later. So before we get into all that, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Crypto Miner Bros. Since 2018, CryptoMinerBros.com has been the premier site for top tier crypto mining hardware, earning the trust of miners across the globe. The prices displayed on their site cover shipping and DDP straight to your doorstep, ensuring no unexpected costs at checkout. They deliver to over 100 countries and even provide lower invoicing options to help you cut down on customs fees. Payment is a breeze with options like direct bank transfer or cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin, USDT or Ethereum. With over 250 ASIC options, they stock some of the channel's favorites like the Bitax, the Bitax Touch and the Avalon Nano 3S. Join tens of thousands of happy customers who rely on CryptoMinerBros.com for dependable hardware fulfillment, clear pricing and a top-notch service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com today, link in the description. So the Zyber 8 comes with eight chips underneath and it has this massive heatsink as you can see right there. It comes from a company called Tiny Chip Hub, which I'll show you on the website. So there's a fan here and then there's also a back fan which is cooling upwards which we can kind of try to show you now. So under there is a fan spinning. It has a different type of power supply that we're normally seeing with like the Nerd QX with the barrel plug there. So this has a, I believe it's called dual phase and this is an XT30 or XT60. And it also comes with this LCD screen, which has a turn off time. So I think it's every 10 minutes. So once you power it on, it will stay on for 10 minutes and then it will turn off, which saves a little bit of energy. But I have been saying in my videos that this is not copper. It turns out it is a copper heatsink. It's just had uh, graphene across it. So it is technically copper and there's copper. These are all copper tubes that actually run through and you can kind of see them on the bottom here. They run across the chips that are underneath. I have never actually seen underneath it because I haven't taken it apart. But if we do have that new heatsink, which we'll touch on a little bit later, then we can kind of do a video showing you what the bottom of this looks like. I believe these aren't open source as well. So the Bitax Hex that we got alongside this is open source, but this currently isn't, which I don't really know why it's not, but uh, that's kind of up to the creator if they want to do that or not. I'm not too bothered if they do open source or not. I mean, it surely shouldn't be that hard for you know somebody to come along and create one of these if they wanted to you already have the plans for the hex so maybe it's just a different design on the board and then you add two more chips but i don't know enough so maybe it's a lot harder than that to get more than one chip or from six to eight chips on a board obviously you have to think about the cooling solution so that's why you have this massive heat sink in there but apart from that, the only other things that you get with this is this plexiglass case, which is actually very useful because of the fan underneath that is Dragon Air. Normally, I don't really know where the best placement is. I would think it'd actually be on the side so you can get air in there and air from this fan under here. I'm assuming that that's doing a lot of cooling as well for the chips and it probably needs a little bit more airflow to actually cool the chips down a little bit. And then I think in here, these two black things right there is the voltage regulators and then you have the two fans or the fan plugins right there. So it's definitely an interesting miner that we've acquired. It does around six to seven terahash overclock. There is an eco mode which we're currently using, which is around five terahash. And this uses the same chips as a Bitax Supra. So the S21 chips, I believe, are under there. And it's actually pretty good terahash, but we'll move over to the computer because I have a lot of things to show you that we could potentially do with this. And we'll show you kind of the usability. 
But if you wanted to know what we've been mining on this since we actually got it, we solo mined Bitcoin for a little bit and then we moved it to Parasite Pool, which is technically a hybrid. And then we did a little bit of Digibyte mining for probably a couple of days just to see if we could hit some blocks on it, which we eventually did. And now it's back on Parasite Pool. So that's mainly what we're using it for right now. But we could switch it up in the future. You guys can let me know in the comments if you want to see it mine a different coin other than Bitcoin. So let's head over to the computer and let's talk about the plans and how this has performed over the last couple of months. So as I said, we did get this from a company called Tiny Chip Hub and we also got the Bitaxe Hex from it. So these are the two older versions that we currently have and the newer version is called the Zyber 8G. So we have the Zyber 8S, which is around 450 pounds and then the 8G is around 600 pounds. I personally believe that it's probably better at this point to go with the Zyber 8 because the efficiency is way better and you get a lot more terahash for what you're paying for. So these are more of the outdated models in terms of the Zyber 8 and the Bitax Hex that we have because there is also a Super Hex. So if you are gonna buy one based on the recommendation of this video, I would personally just go for the most updated version, even though it's around $200 more, you get a lot more terahash and it's more efficient to run in the long run. You can also get a Gamma and a Nerd QX, which also has the same cooling solution that we have on ours. So that copper one with the Thermalite fan by there, or you can get an Ultra, which is a very old one, but that still gives you a chance to hit a Bitcoin block if you want to get one. So the noticeable upgrades that you see from the Zyber 8S to the Zyber 8G. Personally, I wouldn't buy the Zyber 8S now, but this was only released, I think two months ago. So I would personally go with the Zyber 8G at this point. But when we're looking at the difference here, so this is the main thing that I wanna show you and the main thing that we would be looking to upgrade the Zyber 8S that we have to. And this is a heatsink. I believe that this is for a CPU. And the other one, I don't know if that one is for a CPU, but this one definitely is. So we could get this one and put some Nocta fans on it. And hopefully that has the same cooling solution. So I think they have a standard, which is what we have. And then the premium enhanced heatsink and fans is probably what we're looking at right here. So it's the same model that you're seeing, kind of same design and the 3D prints are the same. I'm assuming that there's a back fan on this as well. If we're looking here, so there is right down there and not really much difference in terms of the design, but you can see right here is what we have. We have this graphene one and then that's the standard heatsink that you'd normally get on it. So there's not much difference between the two. And that's how I figured out that this is actually copper rods running through is because this one is just coated in graphene and these would normally be copper and you can see it down there as well. So it is copper at the end of the day and it still comes with this power supply that we see here, which is not normally used. So the Bitax, the Nerd QX, even the Bitax Hex all use a barrel instead of this X, instead of this TX, 30 or 60 I'm I'm kind of blanking on which one it is but it is a 12 volt system as well so you can use it with power supplies that also run on the nerd QX so the premium cooling version that we could go and test is a temperature of 45 to 53 degrees with 32 degrees room temperature and 60 percent fan speed now they have added a new thing in the XOS uh, a lot of them have which is in here, well, this is not the overclock, but if you enable overclock, it'll give you an option on these that allows you to pick a target temperature for the chip. And I believe everyone's sticking with 60 degrees, but that's only if the voltage regulator can handle it. So we've had some gammas that don't handle it very well in terms of the voltage regulator, but it seems like the stats on here are actually pretty good. So with the power, we've got around 90 watts. This is on the eco mode. So eco mode is actually very good. It's pretty efficient. Normal mode is gonna give you maybe five to six terahash and then performance mode will give you around six to seven depending on. 
You can also enable your own overclocks, so you can pick it if you have ones picked out for the Supra chips, so the S21 chips. And I believe that the Zyber 8G, so the newest one, has the S21 Plus chips in it. So those are going to be comparable to Gamma chips. So there's three modes that you can select from, and then you can enable overclocks, which allows you to set the frequency and core voltage. Screen saver, that's just to turn off the screen. One thing that I do want to note about the Zyber 8 is that I was having kind of power outages with it, and it was because the overclocks were way too high, but I didn't realize it at the time. Also, I did have this on, which inverses the polarity of the fan, and that used to spin up and then invert. So for those that don't understand them, because I didn't really understand it at the time, one of them is pushing air through the heatsink, and one of them is trying to take air out of the heatsink. You, normally you don't want to take air out of the heatsink, you want to push cold air through it. But we had this ticked, which meant that it was switching between each time. I think that was causing some power outages because the overclock was running whilst also flipping this fan cycle. And it was getting a little bit too hot. But just going back to the stats there, you can see the overclocks. The ASIC temperature is currently at 50 degrees and the voltage regulator is at 55. The fan speed for the bottom is 55% and then the fan speed for the one beneath that is 60%. So it's relatively efficient, I would say. I wouldn't trust these numbers because they only track when you're actually on the Axe OS. But over the past three months that we've kind of had this, we've done a best difficulty of 139G. And we did make a video on that and that's a very high number compared to, you know, something like a Gamma, which normally would never hit up to that for quite a while. Remember, it is luck on the network, so you can't really predict what best difficulty you're going to get. But over time, averages state that you should have a better difficulty with more chips. So if you want my honest opinion, and we're talking about like, is it worth the hype to actually buy one of these? I would say definitely if, if you had the disposable income to go and buy one. It's around 600 pounds, and I believe that a Nerd QX, which has four chips underneath it, is around 400 pounds. So when you're doing that kind of calculation outwards, this has eight chips, the Nerd QX has four. That means that you're saving around 200 pounds, or you can kind of do the calculations for dollars, it's about 1.3 is the conversion, I think. But you're saving around a quarter of the price on the chips because you're getting eight instead of four or two lots of four. So I think it's a relatively good price to go for the newer versions. But alternatively, you could go for the older versions because they're probably gonna be dropping in price as well. Even the Bitaxe Hex, that gives you six chips. So if you wanted to buy, you know, the same amount of hash rate, you would probably have to buy four gammas, which is around 400 pounds. Same with the Nerd QX basically. The only thing that you're really upselling for is efficiency, but if you have some sort of solar rig, then this might be a better option for you because you don't really care too much about the efficiency. The main thing you're looking for efficiency is are you spending too much money trying to mine Bitcoin? So once you get into these bigger range kind of boards that you see with eight chips, you're looking at quite a heavy price for electricity cost. So 100 watts or even 90 watts times by whatever your electricity rate is, it's probably around two kilowatts per day, judging on kind of the wattage that we're seeing here. And that might run you maybe 50 cents or even 40 cents per day, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it adds up over the year. So I suggest if you are gonna buy one of these, make sure that your electricity cost is at least 15 cents per kilowatt hour. With the gammas and the bit axes, they're fine because they're really using minimal amount of electricity. But when you're looking at eight chips, it is kind of hard to justify without thinking about the power cost. But if we're looking here, this does 180 watts of power consumption on the newest version. So around double what you're seeing on the Zyber 8 that we have. So more and more, you have to think about the power cost that you're putting into it as well, because that's going to be around four kilowatts every day. And then that's probably going to be like a dollar if you have really high electricity costs. So you're gonna be spending $360 per year to run this thing. 
But overall, if you do have the money to go and spend on this, I think technically the deal is better than the Nerd QX. Obviously, you want to be in the open source nature of mining. But for some people, that doesn't really matter. You know, there's some people out there that will buy the Avalon Nano just because it's cheap hash rate and not great efficiency. But if you are going for great efficiency, then the Zyber 8 is kind of offering you two Nerd QXs at probably around three quarters of the price. But hopefully we do get one of these on the channel in the future and hopefully we do an upgrade video even on our one that we have right now to upgrade it to this kind of heatsink because I think that would look very good and it's content at the end of the day so you guys would want to see it but you guys can let me know in the comments as well. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content like this.